sounds better. better. How to fix high pitch chipmunk voice? This final episode two scene was unbelievable. Before we even started working on it. The team sat me down and they kind of did a little show and tell of the, the rough animation that they had. And I think they were hesitant to show it to me, but just from that rough animation, I was so moved. I mean, just immediately moved to tears. I felt like I'd just been gut punched and I, I immediately felt it. I immediately felt it. I was like, let's go. Let's, let's get on this. So, it, it shouldn't surprise me. <laughs> It shouldn't surprise me by now, because I've been working on Alex for so long now, but every time we come to the table to do a new scene or, or lay down some new material, I am always blown away, and this scene was just the epitome of that feeling. Um, I was so pumped to get in there and, and start working on it. And they're always up in the, up in the ante and always um, taking it to the next level, but this time, this scene is different. Because this time, Alex loses. And I think this is a... I don't think it is a major sacrifice. She, you see her carrying around the wounds of her mother that she lost, but her dad made her who she is. Her dad taught her, her dad groomed her, and I think, most importantly, he loved her. And, um... This script was a gift and a gut punch all in one. Um, I don't know. When you, when, you, when you give me something like that, it really motivates me to kind of try to knock it out of the ballpark. I love, love playing Alex. And I have to say, it's definitely my favorite acting job I've ever had. Hands down. So I really don't think I had any idea what I was getting into when I auditioned for the game because I, I really had no clue what Half-Life was, what Steam was, or what Valve was about. But I did really have a feeling that it was something that was really heavy since when I was in the waiting room, everybody in, that was sitting across from me just seemed like they were stars or recognizable faces. And then the first time that I sat down with the Valve team, they showed me some rough animations of Alex and immediately I, I just couldn't keep my eyes off her and she actually looked like someone I could be related to and that has never happened to me. Now, a question I get asked a lot is what is the big difference between um, acting for a stage and film and then acting for a video game because this is the first time I've ever done a video game. Um, in general in acting it's helpful to have a director's clear vision from which to spring. Um, then the actor can run with the idea, play with it, imagine new things, fill it out, and, you know, make it a tangible thing or a tangible character. And the great thing about video game acting for me is that I'm completely unlimited. I'm not bound by what I can do physically or how I look or what kind of environment that can be physically created. So the possibilities are completely limitless. There are no boundaries with this. So when we get together and we talk about what the scene is, when they set the stage for me and what environment I'm going to be in, I, I immediately get a complete high. And I, I can only imagine that it is something like how somebody gets when they actually see the game because it blows my mind, the pictures that they paint um, about you know where we are, what situations we're in. So we, we discuss that a little and then from there, we just kind of go on... Uh, I guess instinct is the only way I can really describe it because I just take what they give for me and, and kind of volley it back in, in the way that it comes out immediately. So I just go into my little dark booth and I can imagine that I'm anywhere. And it's the best, the best kind of make-believe for a storyteller. And you, you just aren't limited. No more two months.
Runs better, looks better, sounds better.